In this video, we'll discuss the tangent lines problem, which is one of the problems that connects pre-calculus and calculus together via a process that is called the limit process. Well, first, let's look at tangent lines to a circle. So given this circle and a point 1, square root of 3, the green point, we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line to this circle at this point, which is the purple line. Using some information that we have known, you know, like on a circle, a tangent line to a circle will be perpendicular to the secant line that goes through the same point and the center, which is the red line in this case. How can we find the formula of the purple line? Well, first, let's start with the formula of this circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals to 4, because 0, 0 is a center, and the radius is 2. But then because the point, the green point, is on the upper part of the circle, um, which means we can just figure out the formula of the blue segment of this circle, which is y equals to square root of x squared minus 4. Take the positive part. And then using the point slope form, y equal to m, x minus x1 plus y1, where m is a slope of the line, x1 and y1 is a point on the line. We can find the formula of the red line because we know the two points, 0, 0, and 1 square root 3. We can find the slope, which is square root 3. And plug in the point slope form, we get square root 3x. Since the red line and the purple line is perpendicular, we can figure the formula of the purple line using the opposite reciprocal uh, of the two slopes of the red and the purple line to figure out the slope of the purple line and then using the point 1 and square root 3 to figure the equations of the purple line. All right. So to find the tangent line to a circle, we can just use the knowledge that we have learned in pre-calculus. How about when you want to find a tangent line to a parabola, which is the quadratic function? So let's look at this particular example when the parabola or the quadratic functions is um, x squared over 2 minus 2. And then I want to look at the point P uh, when x equals to 2 and y equals to 0. I want to find the equation of this purple line, which is the tangent line to the point, uh, to the parabola at P. Well, as we can see that um, P and one thing that we can do is we can pick a point Q on the curve and we draw a secant line, PQ. And then we move Q close to P. Again, we're just using the secant line, PQ, but we move the point Q that is closer and closer to P until it's very, very close to P. And as you can see that at this point, the secant line, PQ, can be seen as the tangent line to this parabola at the point P. And this table shows you the, the positions of Q in terms of x value and the slope of PQ. So when we started it, x of Q is 0, so the slope is 1. And when we move Q closer to P uh, to 1.5, the slope increased to 1.5 and when the point Q is 1.9, then the slopes incre increase to 1.95. And if I'm being a little greedy, I keep moving the point Q closer and closer to P, let's say as a point 1.999, then the slope of PQ is increased, but not as much, right? From 1.95 to 1.9995. So at this point, I can use an estimations that the slope of the tangent line to this parabola at p is 2, because 1.995 can be routed up to 2. 
Again, the goal is always find the equation of the tangent line using the point slope form. I figure out the slope and use a point P to figure that the tangent line at P um, has an equation of y equals to 2, which is the slope, times x minus 2 plus 0. If you simplify it, it's going to be 2x minus 4 is the purple line, the equation of the purple line. Now if we can just pick a random functions and a random point. In this case, I pick a function x times e to the one-third of x and the point p at x equals to negative 5. Okay. And again, the process is we want to pick a point on the curve so the points be negative 5, and you want to find the tangent line goes through that point. You want to pick a point on the curve, let's say q, that's 0, 0. You draw a second line, and you move the point q along the curve closer and closer and closer to p. And at this point again, the second line here can be seen as the tangent line at p. And if you look, want to look at the slope of the secant lines when you move q closer to p, when um, x of q equals to negative 0.82, you have the slope is negative slope, negative 0.12387. And if you moving it a little closer, let's say negative 4.99, 4.999, then the slope that you are getting is about negative 0.12596. Zero two. So this number here is a number that you can use um, as the slope of the tangent line to this curve at this point, p. So this example shows you that it doesn't matter which curve, which function you're looking at. It doesn't matter which point you're looking at on the, fun on the curve. You can always use this process to estimate the tangent line to any curve at any point by first start with a second line pq and then you use the horizontal distance between p and q in this case we use it in a way that we decrease this distance down to zero so if i call delta x as the horizontal distance between p and q then I decrease delta x down to 0 as I move q closer to p. And I can use a second line pq in order to estimate the tangent line at p using the decreasing of the horizontal distance between p and q. So this whole process here is called the limit process. So you find estimating the tangent line using the secant lines while decreasing the horizontal distance between P and Q. Um, in this particular example, it is when you use a limit process to find the tangent line at any point on any curve.